Hello, it is Tracy Jackson, also known as a spiritual cheerleader. And I wanted to come on to talk a little bit about um, balance, um, mainly because I, I feel like at one point in my life, I was completely unbalanced one way, and then another point in my life, I was completely unbalanced in a completely different way. And now I'm really trying to navigate the whole idea of balance in my life um, and really using my intuition and um, inner guidance to help me to navigate what it is that I want to do and be um, in my life. So basically, I would say 2015 late 2015, really late 2016, I, I came to realize like, oh my God, I need a change in my life. Like something's got to give. I don't know what it is, but I don't feel, I don't feel good in my life. Um, you know, at the time I had just, you know, started into a relationship with a new person who was amazing. Um, and everything that I literally thought I wanted in a partner. Um, and I had, you know, just said like, okay, job's good. Now I've got the guy, the guy's good. You know, everything should be great now. And, and then it wasn't, it wasn't great. You know, like I still felt like something was missing. And, um, I, I blamed it on my job. Um, I blamed it on this idea that I felt I, I was chained to this job. I felt like my life wasn't my own and that I was literally, um, stuck. Like I could not, I, I couldn't. I didn't have anything that I was going to be able to um, offer to to anyone else beyond this job. Um, and therefore, I was stuck. I was stuck in this job that I didn't really feel, you know, really passionate about, didn't really feel like was serving my purpose, didn't really feel like had meaning at all. Um, and I was searching for it. I was searching for meaning. And I decided to start looking for alternatives, like other things that I could do. And at the time, I really didn't think that I had any skills elsewhere. I didn't really feel like I I had any marketable talents other than being an attorney. And um, I you know, many of you guys know this. I, I saw an ad on Instagram with this girl flexing her biceps, talking about how she was a health coach and how they needed online health coaches. And I signed up to be an online health coach. And it was perfect at the time because I really needed to get myself back into shape. Um, you know, I had really gotten burned out on the gym. Um, and this was a way for me to not only stay accountable to getting my workouts in, but it was also a way I could give back. And I felt like I had some meaning again. And when I started on that journey, I literally cut so much of my social life out. I literally threw away, you know, like, I was like, I'm not watching television anymore <laughs> because I got to work on my business. I am not, you know, I'll read self-help books. Like, every, everything was in furtherance of this goal. Like, there was very little time to just enjoy things because I was so dedicated and wanting to get out of my current job and wanting to make this business successful that I literally um, just... I mean, literally just like lit a match and was like burned down because I don't want any of that anymore and I don't have time for it <laughs> because I, I'm on a trajectory, right? So I stopped, I literally stopped watching television. Um, I would watch it only, 
you know, on the weekends, like maybe when Game of Thrones was on, like I would watch Game of Thrones, but that was like an hour a week. And um, I, I literally, I, I limited my social interactions to the guy I was dating, like that was it. And I was like, you know, I'm so dedicated to my work. Like, I just really wanna be focused on this and I don't have time to do the stuff that doesn't matter to me. Well, cut to 2017, um, I'm, I'm basically doing all of that, right? And then uh, my world kind of comes crashing down because I, I, me and this guy end up breaking up and I was like, I thought we were perfect for one another. Like, what's going on? I don't even understand this. He had a lot going on. Obviously, you know, I was in my own, you know, crazy health coach world. And I, I had a bit of a come to Jesus moment, right? Like I started seeing things and saying, you know, it just, things don't feel right. Like, it doesn't feel right what I'm doing here. It doesn't feel right to put all of this, you know, um, priority on this. I feel like I need to be doing other things. Like, I feel like I need to be um, getting more into the, the spiritual stuff. Like, I felt more pulled and more called in that arena. Um, and so I, I ended up, you know, kind of falling out of coaching <laughs> towards the end of 2017 and saying to myself, um, you know, at the, towards the end of 2017 that i I, I mean, I literally had an ultimatum. I read, uh, light is the new black by Rebecca Campbell. Um, this is her work, your light Oracle. Um, but I read light is the new black and she talks in that book about how she had given kind of a, a, you know, a, I don't want to say an ultimatum, <laughs> but it kind of sounds like that. But she had basically put this test to the universe. And she said, you know, if I'm meant to do this intuitive work, if I'm meant to, you know, go to this intuitive workshop to further my spiritual journey, you know, you'll make it possible. You'll basically, you know, supply because I don't have the money to go I don't have the 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 accommodations I don't have anything well cut to um and this story is in the book so you can you can definitely read it but basically all the things happened and lined up to basically allow her for her to go she was able to get accommodations. She got extra money from from something else. Um, you know, she she got there, right? And so I had done that that same type of thing. Like, universe, if you really want me to stay with coaching, I will. Like, I I absolutely will because I do love it. I do love it. But um, I if that's what I'm meant to do, then these these things will occur. And if they don't occur, then I will feel that you are pushing me to do more of the spiritual work. Obviously, things did not occur. I felt called to do more spiritual work because they didn't, the things that I had asked to happen didn't happen. So I I went on and I basically adopted the same feelings, tactics, whatever that I was doing in my health coaching and just transferred it over to the spiritual work that I was doing. And it wasn't until I went to um, Spirit Junkie Level 2 in November of 27, uh, 2017, October, I guess it was October, um, November of 2017, that I started recognizing like I was changing. Um, shortly thereafter, I came back home and determined that you know, um, my, my mom had taken ill and, um, ended up moving her out to Houston, Texas to get treatment for, um, uh, eight months, um, starting in January of 2018. Right. Um, and it, it like upended everything. It upended my world in a way, um, such that I, I ended up changing how I was. I, I changed. Um, and, you know, with my mom being here, I started watching a lot more television because my mom was here. And I don't want to, you know, 
be working on something, I want to spend time with my mother, right? Um, and I I started, you know, picking up new shows and doing new things. But I, I would still go back and I would read in, in my books and I would do, you know, I would do um, the work. I was, I was doing a lot of internal work at the time. Um, and it dawned on me, okay, like, I don't, I, Tracy, you, you had gone w one way and you'd said, you know, when your life was in chaos, you were watching television all the time. Like you weren't really doing anything to, to better yourself. You weren't, um, you know, necessarily, um, doing anything to connect you to source or anything like that. Like you felt kind of unmoored. And then you got into this whole system and you started connecting the source, but you kind of went completely crazy with saying, I can only read self-help books. I can only, um, you know, do work in relation to my business, or, you know, be it health coaching or spiritual. And like, that's all you could do. Like you got out of balance on that side. And it wasn't until 2018 that I really recognize that I didn't have to just do one or the other. I started integrating more of who I was into the grand scheme of things. Instead of feeling like the spirituality had to push part of me away, I started integrating it in. So, um, you know, I think about, you know, mid last year, uh, taking the time to, to read Ready Player One after seeing the movie, um, was something that it was super fun for me. I hadn't read a fiction book in forever. And that's all I grew up reading was fiction books, right? Um, but I hadn't read them. I literally had relegated myself to, to, to reading only, you know, personal development, self-help, you know, nonfiction books. And it, it became such a chore that I was like, you know, I'm not, I don't really want to read anything. Like I, I would go back and forth between my Audible, Hay House, um, you know, my Kindle, trying to find something I wanted to read because they were all the same type of book. And, um, you know, this year it was, it, I said, I'm going to follow my bliss. Whatever I feel like reading is what I'm going to read. It might be a fiction book. It might be a personal development book, but whatever it is, I'm going to read what I want to read. I read comic books last year. That was freaking awesome. I hadn't read comic books in, in forever. Um, because that didn't fit into the plan. That didn't fit into me furthering myself in business, but Here's what I didn't get. I'm not going to get any further if I'm out of balance. I'm not going to get any further because I'm not connected. I'm not, I'm literally um, denying a part of me. I'm not accepting what is. I'm not radically accepting all of me. I'm literally denying part of me um, because. I feel like this is going to make me more spiritual or this is going to help me to get to the next level or whatever. Um, and I had to literally stop that. I had to literally say to myself, Tracy, this is not, this isn't healthy for you. It's okay to watch This Is Us for five episodes on a Saturday and then come back and do your your daily live, you know, or your weekly live. It's okay to, you know, spend time with friends or family and then come back and do something um, that just fuels your soul in another way, like journaling or, you know, meditating or listening and dancing to music that you love. It's okay to take a day to just jam out with music. It's okay.
it's all about balance, right? It's all about balance. And I feel like many of us on this spiritual journey, when we first embark on it, we get so overwhelmed and so excited about everything that we do. We really do want to read all of those books and all of those things. And then we are in it for a while and we go, oh, I guess I, I guess I got to keep up with this, like, because... I don't want to get off my spiritual path and I I feel like if I don't continue to do this like I am going to veer off in some way or I am inviting myself to not be as centered and grounded and at peace um, because I'm doing that but what we don't realize is by um, rigidly um, trying to do something in a dutiful manner um, we're actually making ourselves get out of peace and out of whack and out of alignment um, because we're not following our joy. We're not following our bliss. Um, and now that's really, that's kind of my guiding force. What feels good to me right now? What do I want to do right now? What do I want to share right now? Literally an hour ago, I was watching This Is Us. Now I'm talking to you. So that's me following my joy, right? I'm, I'm enjoying sharing with you right now. As soon as I get off of here and I do my, my email, you know, newsletter for the week, I'll go back to watching Probably This Is Us. Or maybe I'll journal. Or maybe I'll listen to a little bit more Radical Acceptance, which I listened to this morning as I washed my hair, right? So it's just whatever feels good to me right now and really allowing myself to accept all parts of me and um, to come into balance, to not tip too far over to um, doing nothing, doing, doing, you know, not, not allowing myself to move forward, not, uh, not motivating myself to continue on. And then not tipping the other way such that I become so motivated that I forget that I have other desires, other dreams, other wishes, other things that I love to do. So um, I really wanted to just share that with you today um, because I, I want to help you in that area. I want to help you to find that balance. I want to help you to to not deny yourself, deny any part of you, um, because I've done it my entire life. I've always pushed some part of me down um, to allow another part to kind of be, you know, supersede that, that part of me that I didn't like. And I found that when I did that, I, I got out of balance. I got out of whack. I... Um, many times had a lot of anger and frustration um, because I wasn't expressing myself in the true way that I wanted to express myself. So um, I say all that to say that um, I want to help in, if in the event you um, need someone to help you in getting back into balance and really identifying those areas where you might be out of balance a little bit, where you need to focus back in um, and really just, just come back to you, come back to who you are. And sometimes it's really just a matter of sitting down and identifying what is it that I really want to do? What is it that I'm denying myself um, the, the right to do right now? What do I feel like I'm obligated to do? And am I really obligated to do that? Um, it's really all about that. Um, obviously, I can help in a more formal manner. You could, you're you also welcome to take what I've stated in this video and use that as a guide point. Um, but uh, like I said, I just, I really, I have a heart for this because I was there. I've been there. I know it. It's been my entire life that I've done it, right? I feel like Many times, like, I'm, there's parts of the core of me that are the same, that have been the same from, you know, my first memories. 
And then there's parts of me where I'm like, I remember when I did that, like that seems so different from how I am right now, but it is still a part of me. It is a part of who I was. And to deny that um, is not is not doing myself a, a service. And it's not really accepting all of who I am. Um, so I, I really have taken time to get back to the heart of me, to the person that I am. Not who I want to become, because I did all of the becoming <laughs> when I was younger. And really, it's about peeling back the layers to see who I am. And really helping you peel back the layers to see who you are so that you can live a more balanced life and be comfortable with who you are in your own skin. And, and moving forward every day, not feeling the need to join the crowd, but feeling the need to just be who you are and being excited about just being who you are. That's, that's what makes the change. That's what brings the magic. Um, it's not, it's not, you know, the business course that, that tells you, you know, how to get 8 million followers, you know, because you could get 8 million followers, but if you're not comfortable with who you are, doesn't matter. They're not going to stay, right? Because you're going to be bouncing all around just trying to follow their whim. You won't be happy. You won't be satisfied. Um, but when you get comfortable with who you are, you don't care. You, I mean, literally do not care. I cannot tell you how many times, um, for me, I've looked at like follower count go up and down, up and down. And I'm just like, yep, I'm okay. Because I don't want the people that are here for a moment. I want the people that are here for a lifetime. I want the people that are here, um, to, experience meaning to to um to have purpose i don't want the fly by nights um because they're not they're not on the same trajectory as me i'm here to bring about a major shift and a major change in our world and not everybody's equipped for that ride not right now at least and um that's that's really my goal um, that's really what I'm here for. And all of my offerings, um, my healing sessions, my coaching sessions, everything is geared around that. It's about creating, I guess, a new world order. And that somewhat sounds ominous, <laughs> um, but it's not, it's not, it's, it's literally creating a world in which it is safe to be yourself when um, you are able to be who you are without fear, where you're able to speak your truth, shine your light, um, and just be who you always wanted to be, who you really are. <laughs> That's who you want to be, the person that you are. Um, you know, even when we state that we love this person, you know, people, oh, I idolize Michelle Obama. You idolize Michelle Obama because you see in her something that is in you. It's in you. You just haven't actualized it. You haven't brought it out yet. And, and when you bring it out, you are, you're, you're better than Michelle Obama because you're you. You're you. So I say all of that to say, um, you know, this talk was on balance and it ended up coming full circle and being about becoming really who you are. Um, it's all the same. It really is. And um, I hope that I can help you in some way uh, to become more you um, because that's what I did all last year. And um, it's an experience that I, I would not deny anyone else. All right. I hope you have a wonderful week. 
Thanks for joining me for my talk this week. Bye.